Welcome to our first online candidates night sponsored by Hadley Mothers Club. I am Denise Devine, president of the Hadley Mothers Club. I will be moderating tonight because our past moderator, Av Harris, is unavailable to, due to his position at the Department of Public Health in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We would like to remind all voters in Hadley that the election will be held at Hopkins Academy on Saturday, May 16th from 10 to 8. Anyone who is uncomfortable voting in person can request in writing an absentee ballot from the Hadley Town Clerk. Our candidates will adhere to the rules sent to them when they agree to participate. We will go in order as listed in, on the ballot. Questions will be asked after each position's candidate have made their opening statement. Thank you for, to all who submitted questions, but due to time constraints, we have to limit the amount of questions asked. Looks like we have all of our candidates on the screen right now for select board. This is position is for three years and we have um, four candidates. And the first candidate is Nicole Burkum Bass. My name is Nicole Burkum. I grew up in Hadley and now live here with my husband and two children. Cameron, who is four, and Ava, who is almost one. I grew up in a local family business in Hadley, and now my husband and I have our own business right on Route 9. I was part of the Hadley school system from preschool through high school. In 2006, I graduated from Hopkins Academy with a class of about 35 students, most of whom I had been in school with since preschool. The Hadley school system is exceptional. I love the character of the school, and I'm proud that I can now put my children in the school system. When my son started preschool, I noticed a lot of familiar faces when dropping him off. People I had gone to school with were now sending their children to school. It really shows what a wonderful place Hadley is to raise a family when you see generation after generation coming back. After graduating from Hopkins, I moved to Florida and attended Florida Atlantic University earning a business degree. After graduation, I moved to the other coast of Florida for law school where I met my husband. Shortly after graduating law school in 2014 and earning my law license in the state of Florida and Massachusetts, we decided to move back to Hadley to raise our family. I wanted for my family what I had growing up. We have now been living in North Hadley since 2015. Being invested in this community with children in the school system and a local business, I want to see Hadley succeed and remain much of how it is now and how it was growing up. Having grown up here gives me perspective and the ability to set priorities in a way that I think is consistent with what is important to the town and the people who live here. My professional skills as an attorney would translate well to being a member of a five person board. I have a strong ability to analyze information and work, to work effectively with other people to solve issues. The new senior center, library, and fire substation are beautiful buildings that add to the appeal of our town. However, older buildings like the North Halley Village Hall, the Russell School, and Goodwin Library are expensive and time consuming to maintain. Growing up, I remember when the Russell School was used by the Pioneer Valley Charter School. It's a beautiful building right in the center of town, but it's falling apart. As a member of the board, I would like to prioritize steps we can take to deal with these buildings and reduce our costs before they are past the point of being able to, able to salvage. Currently, the North Halley Village Hall is underway to be owned by a private individual who will renovate the building. Halley's aging infrastructure is a problem requiring swift action. And as a member of the select board, I would work with the Hadley DPW to find the best solution while also trying to maintain Hadley's low tax rate. I have a commitment to seeing more communication about what's going on in town with residents. Hadley Media has a fantastic YouTube page where residents can easily find and view videos of our town board meetings. However, unless you have the time to watch long meetings, it's difficult to learn what's going on. As an alternative way to share information, I think it would be helpful to draft a brief one page sheet of key points that were discussed at select board meetings and post it to the town webpage for people to view. That way residents can stay involved and informed about what's going on with the town without having to spend hours viewing videos online. Community involvement is key in making decisions that are best for our town. And by sharing information in a concise way online, I hope to keep people engaged. 
I currently have a Facebook page and website, which if elected to the board, I will use to share information with residents. As someone who has grown up here and is invested in the community with my business and family, I have a sincere motivation to do what is best for our town. During these times, our local businesses, especially our restaurants, need our support, need our support and I hope we as a community can find creative ways to support them. Our town employees, elected officials, and department heads do an excellent job running this town, and I hope to complement their efforts as a select board member. You can also view my webpage or Facebook page to learn more about what my priorities are for the town. I would like to thank the Mothers Club for arranging this Zoom event this evening. I hope to earn your vote on May 16th, and I encourage anyone who would prefer to vote from home to submit an absentee ballot application to the town clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, now we would like to introduce um, our next candidate uh, for select board is Brenda Feidenkevitz. Good evening. Again, my name is Brenda Feidenkevitz and I've been a citizen, a resident of Hadley since 1988. I was born and raised in Northampton, um, Northampton and Florence great community, but I just always loved Hadley. A funny thing is that my mother said that if I, she would take me over the Hadley Bridge once and once only. And she said, I know you'll never go back, but now I'm a resident and the only one that is a resident of our, you know, from our family. But my husband has been, he was born and raised in Hadley and it's a great community. Um, I see a lot of good things upcoming for, for Hadley, but, uh, to be honest with you, I think this election is not at the top of anybody's uh, priority list. I think that what's happened in the, the last month and a half is really had a, a profound effect on most of, uh, most of the residents here. And I know from a business background, I've been in business myself for almost 24 years. It'll be 24 years in September um, that we have a lot of work to do. It's so sad to ride up and down Route 9 to see restaurants with their you know, grab and go, uh, trying to make a go of it, grab and go dinners. They're trying to you know, make a go of whatever they can leech onto, to grab onto, to help their businesses. It's very sad that what's happened in the last month and a half. And I know it's gonna be really tough for all of us. It's tough for our seniors. It's tough for our kids. It's tough for our farmers, all of the businesses. We don't know if a lot of these businesses are coming back. You know, it's sad. And I think what we need to do is we need to watch our expenses. You know, they're talking that we have a, a, a great deficit facing Hadley. Well, we have more of a deficit. We have family members that, that are perishing in this, in this, this terrible epidemic. We need to really help our citizens, our seniors, our kids, our farmers, the rest of our business community. And it's very sad and it's had a profound effect on me, but I know I am strong. I've been through some really tough times in my life. And I love this town. I love the residents and it's time to, to say, let's get together. Let's check on each other. Let's help each other. And it's not a time for politics where we just need to be fiscally conservative. We don't know where the chips are gonna fall. We have no idea what's gonna happen. We have no idea. None of us tonight can say, oh yes, we're gonna be fine in two weeks. We're gonna be fine in four weeks. It's not gonna happen. We have to be realistic. I love this town. We're all gonna to get together and we're gonna come through this. So, you know, and I've had a business background, like I said, for 24 years, and I worked for other co companies before that. I worked for the federal government, and, you know, I worked for a lot of good people, but this is something I have never seen in my life. And I'm 60 years old. I'm not a baby. And I love the seniors in this town. I'm worried for them. I love the kids. Kids are me. You can ask anybody that knows me. Kids are me. I love them but we need to protect everybody. We need to watch out for each other and be fiscally responsible. 
tax increases, they're not going to happen now. There's people that can't pay their mortgages, never mind taxes. Some people have lost their jobs. Some people have been furloughed. You know, and I think it's very important that we stick together and you just ride up, up and down Route 9 and see what's going on. It's sad. We're worried about our revenues. We're worried about, look at the farmers. They're, they're having a very hard time. Let's look at everybody. And I appreciate, you know, the Mother's Club. They have some great people. And uh, thanks for having us. Our next candidate is Jane Nevin Smith. Hi, I'm running because I've lived in Hadley more than half of my life and I love it here. It was a great place for me to raise my children. I am happy and grateful that I now have time to give back to the town that has been so good to me and my family. And I'm asking for you to vote for me because I believe that I am the best qualified candidate for this job. As chair of the Senior Center Building Committee, I have been attending select board meetings for the last 18 months to give weekly updates. As a result of this, I have gained a good knowledge of the issues facing our town. Over the last 40 years, I have created four successful businesses in Hadley. This business and financial experience will be valuable to the process of tightening our belts because of the reduction of town revenue. I will work with each of the members of the select board to balance fiscal responsibility and the need to maintain town services and infrastructure. My hands-on work on town committees will be helpful as the select board interviews candidates for the position of town administrator and possibly a town planner. I think and work like an engineer, which will be useful in creating a plan with the DPW to improve our aging town infrastructure. My communication skills will aid in fostering greater townwide interaction and transparency. Past work I have done on town committees will be beneficial in maintaining our commitment to Hadley's future by protecting and preserving the historic and rural character of our town. It will be an asset as we each seek ways to have affordable housing for seniors, young families, and singles. As a retired person, I will have time to fully dedicate my energies to helping this town. At the last election, only one fifth of the town voted. Therefore, 20% of the registered voters chose the direction of our town. We need everyone to be involved in our government by having your voice heard. Please vote. If you choose to vote for me, I will be available for the next three years to listen to everyone's ideas and questions. I look forward to serving all citizens of Hadley, including young families, singles, longtime residents, newcomers, students in the Hadley school system, farmers, the business community, college students, and retired people. Please vote for me, Jane Nevin Smith, on May 16th. Thank you. And thanks to the Mothers Club for holding this event, especially given the challenges of social distancing. Okay, thank you. And uh, the next um, candidate for select board is Amy Parsons. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amy Parsons. I was raised in Hadley and I attended Hooker School and then the new Hadley Elementary School when it was built. Um, I graduated in 2006 from Hopkins Academy. Um, I attended Kansas, Kansas State University where I received a Bachelor's of Science in Agribusiness. While at Kansas State, I was the Association of Residence Halls President. I, I, was, um, the rep, I, re I represented the 4,000 undergraduates that lived on campus and attended a regional and national conference on Kansas State's behalf. The experience allowed me to learn to listen to my constituents and their needs, as well as giving me knowledge on running meetings with parliamentary procedure. After graduation, I started my career with ConAgra, a multi-billion dollar company headquartered in Omaha, Nebraska. I worked for seven years in Minnesota in the flour milling industry, 
doing everything from production management, warehouse supervising, production supervising, OSHA safety compliance, human resource functions, and packaging and inventory supervision, as well as managing 16 employees. The experience I gained in doing so has allowed me to see the big picture of a large organization and given me the managerial skills to evaluate and assist people in various situations. I see the town of Hadley as being like a large organization with many different people from different walks of life. I returned to Hadley in 2017 because I missed my family and wanted to become more involved in the family farm. I'm proud to be a 13th generation farmer and to have grown up learning the value of true hard work. After my brother's passing, I worked for nearly a full year on the family farm. This reacquainted me with Hadley as a community and led me to want to get involved in town politics. I'm here to stay now and want to be an active member of this town. I'm known for telling it like I see it and sometimes I can be a little bit too opinionated, but I'll always have the town's best interest at heart. I will not make promises that I cannot keep. I'm a team player and have learned to work together with so many different people in my managerial experiences. It's imperative that the select board respectfully works together to maintain Hadley's reputation while figuring out how to overcome um, current challenges due to COVID-19 and other budgetary issues. These challenges are something that this town has never faced before with lost revenue from the closed colleges, universities, and local businesses not being able to operate business as usual. Just the loss of college graduations this year alone will significantly reduce the town revenue from hotel excise taxes, which were $800,000 in 2018. There are also infrastructure issues such as water and sewer lines that need to be addressed as well. The answers to challenges like these will require thinking outside the box and being creative. I understand the need to sometimes struggle in the short term for long-term prosperity. I will try my hardest to work with everyone in a positive way to preserve Hadley's integrity and the small town wholesomeness. A vote for me will reflect the community's voice and not my own self-interest. I'm here for the town as a whole and I'm ready to listen. I hope to receive your vote and I would like to thank the Hadley Mothers Club for putting on this event. Thank you so much and please stay safe and healthy. Thank you. So now we have questions for the select board candidate. So the first question, what is something that you bring to the Hadley select board that other candidates do not? As an example, municipal experience, um, Hadley committee work or Hadley volunteer work you've done in the past. Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind that sets me apart from the other candidates, um, since it all seems like we grew up here and are very involved with the um, community, um, are really the skills of being an attorney. I think it's helpful that on a daily basis, I'm handling issues for clients and in very, you know, kind of heated circumstances. And when you're on a board with five people with other department heads giving you know, facts and issues, and you have to kind of work together to be able to solve problems. I think a lot of my skills as an attorney will come in helpful that way. And I think that's the biggest advantage I have over my other candidates. And what I could bring to the board is my ability to issue spot and find solutions that work with the, that are best for the town. I think that I bring a whole different, uh, set of skills. Um, when my daughter Megan grew up, when uh, Gary and I, you know, were working quite a bit, you know, we still found time to be a big part of the school's activities. Um, there were a few of us, same moms that were always involved in all of the activities at the elementary school um, for all of the different uh, activities that they had including the, you know, the CYO basketball, 
Um, and even in business, we, you know, try to give back as much as we can. We love the kids. We love the citizens. And it means so much to us. And you know what? The biggest thing I have is common sense. I think that that makes, that goes so far. I've been through good times, I've been through bad times, and I seem to always, my faith brings me right back to where I need to be on the positive side of things. I think that, you know, this town is, is just so wonderful. And our daughter had a very good experience until, you know, she went uh, right through all of her elementary preschool she went through, you know, uh, K through six, and then she did her middle school. In fact, she had Amy's mom, who was a wonderful lady. And um, it was just Meg's turn. She uh, went on to, uh, you know, East Hampton to school. She went to, uh, she decided that she wanted to go off to Williston, which we're proud of, you know. She's a great kid and, you know, I think a lot of the kids she went to school with and all the kids today, we have a great set of kids upcoming, but we have to really take care of them with what's going on today. So volunteer jobs in town started when I first moved here 41 years ago, and I was a Lassie lead coach for my daughter's softball team, and that lasted several years. And like any other good mom, I attended all kinds of uh, concerts and athletic events as my kids went through the schools. I've also been a member of the First Congregational Church since I moved here. More recently, I've served as the chair of the Senior Center Building Committee. I also have served on the town search committees for the last two Senior Center directors. And I'm currently the chair of the Friends of the Council on Aging, which is a group that is a fundraising group that helps um, fun things that the town doesn't have money for in the budget that the Council on Aging needs. I think I bring to this um, office a lot of experience, variety, thinking outside the box. I'm a good listener. I have integrity. And I am a good representative of all the town people. I think leaders really have to make the choices available to the townspeople clear so that they can understand what they are going to vote on. Hi. Um, so growing up, I was involved in uh, Girl Scouts and 4-H. Uh, I did a lot of volunteer work for the town, um, and I still volunteer for the Three County Fair. Um, I have a unique perspective as a farmer, um, and you know, I also have done a lot of volunteer work with church. I grew up with the First Congregational Church in Hadley. Um, I can work well under when you're on the board to just not table things. Um, I think it's important to work things and skills and my parents, um, both Chip and Cherry have been phenomenal role models to me. Um, and they really care about this town as well. Um, so I've been able to, you know, grow from them and, um, you know, learn what needs to be done from the town as well. Thank you. Headley residents and other taxpayers often struggle to stay up to date with town government. How can we improve communications between local government and local taxpayers? Brenda, you are up first. I think that's a, that's a, that's a huge issue with just the people that I talk with. I think that we need to, to actually devise a, a new plan, whether it's with our, our communication people or to make sure that, you know, we, we actually have people in, in, a, in a position to, you know, offer time, you know, to our citizens and say, hey, if there's questions that you folks have, you know, call and have, have, you know, a specific, you know, either a number that they can call or if they, let's set up a date that if they have problems, they have questions, they're not sure, you know, you know, that they will actually be able to come in and talk to the, 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 
folks on the select board, or it doesn't matter if it's just the select board, it matters that all of the different boards, that you know, people often have um, questions about you know, the Board of Health, people have questions about conservation, people might have questions with, with the select board. We have to make the select board available to all of our citizens. And I think that, you know, Hadley Media is a great source, a great way to, to get the word out to our people, but we need to help them to under, better understand what's going on in this town because it, it can be very confusing. And I think that we need to do that. And, you know, I think that, the, you know, the sooner the better, especially in, in today's environment, you know, we, we've got some very serious issues going on and we need to help our citizens. We need to help our seniors. We need to help our kids and businesses. So I think that that's a great idea. So, and it needs to be now rather than later. All right. Um, I think that, you know, COVID-19 has really taught us all as a country and community and town um, to, you know, find information. Like right now we're doing a Zoom meeting, which is something that a week ago I didn't even know existed. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think that we have the outlets there. Um, I think, you know, at some point, you know, people can take a little bit responsibility and ask the questions that they need to. Um, you know, information that we need really isn't too hard to find if we're willing to look for it. Um, so I think that the community should be more involved um, and, you know, ask the questions that you need to. Um, you know, the web page, I have gone on it. Um, I will admit that it's not, you know, the town webpage isn't exactly the most user friendly and sometimes you have to click around um, to get information. Some of it might be um, a little bit older. Um, and it's not, it doesn't seem to be easy to find um, things that are very, um, very new. Um, Hadley Media is out there. YouTube is out there. Um, there are, you know, thank you. Hadley residents and other taxpayers often struggle to stay up to date with town government. How can we improve communications between local government and local taxpayers? I think that one of the things we need to do is to educate the town people about the resources that we actually have available. The town webpage is a really wonderful um, piece of equipment for almost anything that's going on in town, but people don't tend to use it. The other thing is Hadley Media offers um, all kinds of programming of all the various meetings that have been held. They also have just entertaining programming. We need as a select board to send more information to the newspapers, the radios, the local TVs, to get our information out in various forms to the different residents. Um, so I think the best way to share information about what goes on at board meetings is to have a brief one page sheet uh, with bullet points of what the hot topics were. And if everyone in town knows that they can click on the web, if they can go to the Hadley webpage and they can click on a link that will pop up a PDF and it'll talk about, you know, quick things that happened at the board meetings that might get people more interested in learning what's going on in the government as opposed to watching videos. I mean, the videos are great and Hadley Media does a great job, but they're really long and most people don't have the time. So I think a, a way to communicate to residents and taxpayers about what's going on at the board meeting specifically would be this one page kind of quick sheet of what happened. Um, I also think another way um, to share information during COVID-19 about ways to help businesses would be to, on the main page for the Hadley webpage, to post a link of the restaurants that are open. I know that that's already posted on the webpage through the, Amber, the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce, who did a great job kind of um, outlining which restaurants are doing takeout and their takeout menus, um, but maybe just having something like that more accessible and right in your face when you go onto the webpage would be helpful for the local businesses. Um, 
and maybe adding more local businesses that are open and a link to their website so that you can review kind of their protocols during this time and how they're keeping people safe would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. So the next question um, is, uh, how do you plan to support the senior citizens of Hadley? So how will I help the seniors? Will I help the seniors as a volunteer to try and um, get information to them through the newsletter? We maintain lists and I seem to be the major list maintainer at the senior center. We have a lot of contact with seniors either by phone or um, through the newsletter and mailings and contact of seniors coming to events is always a fun way to meet people. And I just think keep, keeping people involved and keeping people active as they grow old in place is one of the healthiest things we can do for our seniors. So a lot of my family are seniors. Um, I have many family members of mine that are in their 80s and even 90s. Um, I currently with COVID-19, I have done some shopping for some of them, um, just because it's really not safe for them to be out. Um, also in the First Church of Hadley, a lot of the members are also seniors. Um, definitely do some volunteer work there. Um, you know, I have really only been back to Hadley for about two years. Um, there's definitely room for more volunteer work um, to help seniors. I know that, you know, especially right now where we're all very, very techy, I know that um, some of them are not necessarily as techy, so I'm not sure. Um, hopefully they're able to tune in. Hopefully someone has helped them um, be able to watch this tonight. Um, and I definitely look forward in the future to doing more volunteer opportunities and helping them to stay involved in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have a beautiful new senior center in town and I think I would be great for the people who go there to have programs. Um, it would also be a great way to share information about what's going on in town at the new senior center. Um, I also think it would be great to promote senior housing uh, through um, kind of modifications and planning that would allow for senior housing. Um, we would have to defer to the planning board to that, but I think being able to use the beautiful senior center and have some great programs started there would be great for the seniors and also um, building more senior housing in Hadley would be a great way to um, make more seniors in Hadley happy. Thank you. Yes, I love seniors. They're awesome. You know, if I call my mom a senior, she, she just, if you ever see her, she'd be, probably be mad. She just turned 80 in August. She thinks she's still a kid, but she is a senior, as am I. But, you know, seniors are everything. You know, they have so much to teach us. They have so much to offer us. So we need to offer back to our seniors. They want dignity. They want us to, 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 to include them to be one of us the way that they always have been. Most of our seniors have worked so hard in their lives. They're so proud. And, you know, I am one of them. I belong to the Most Holy Redeemer Parish here in Hadley. And I have been to the nursing homes to, to serve our seniors you know, their the Eucharist, it, it means so much to them, but they just want to be in, in, included. And I think it is so important that any way that we can help them, ask them, you know, what, you know, what can we do for you? You know, you, you are there, you have been there for us, your lives and most of, you know, our lives. You guys are awesome. Let's do what we can, but let's let us ask them let them tell us they love the dignity and yes they love to be pampered but we need to 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 include them more in more ways than just saying you know well you know you're here let's take them out let's do things with them they want to get out they want to be a part of society and i think that's great they're wonderful i wish i had done more with my great gram and my gram so I love seniors. 
Thank you. Okay. Our next question is, um, let's see, it's a little bit lengthy. Um, Hadley faces challenges that require funding to address. These include large projects such as dealing with an aging infrastructure and ongoing operating needs. It's easy to say we can't put more burden on the taxpayer, but that doesn't address the problem. Options would be to increase revenue, decrease spending, or combination of two. Specifically with regards to a lot of the deficits that we will have um, because of the COVID-19, um, let loss of revenue to the town. As a select board member, what actions would you advocate for and why? And please be specific. So I really think it's a combination of both. Um, I know COVID-19 has been, you know, really stressful on a lot of business owners in town. Um, but I think that, um, you'll have to find other ways to cut spending in other, um, in other areas. Um, and unfortunately, like sometimes, like I said in my opening statement, you have to struggle in the short term to be able to prosper in the future. Um, so that's kind of where I stand on that. I am fiscally very frugal. Um, I don't believe in, in overspending and over, um, you know, you know, overextending the budget, you know, having a deficit is not where I want to be and where I want to stand on the select board. Um, you know, I truly believe that, um, you know, some infrastructure upgrades are needed really no matter what. However, um, you know, we really need to be fiscally responsible and maybe we can apply to the state for grants, you know, if there's money that the state might have um, available to us. I know that there's, you know, grants, you know, through Massachusetts, um, just like we kind of got, you know, grants for the library. Maybe we can get grants for infrastructure for the town. Um, maybe federally there's funding available to the town. Um, so I think that there's a lot of avenues that are available to us if we're willing to look for it. And it does take time to fill out applications. Um, we know we did one for the farm. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's kind of, the responsibility on the town to go out there and look for money that's available um, and also decrease spending. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, I am fiscally conservative. Um, I don't wanna see Hadley taxes go up. Um, I think during this time when there's a deficit and there's such a huge loss due to COVID-19, I think a good way to save some money would be to deal with some of these older buildings in town, like I had mentioned. Um, they are a huge cost, they're a huge maintenance cost, and I know the, the workers at the DPW spend a lot of time maintaining them, especially the Russell School. Um, I think it would be ideal to look into possibly selling some of these buildings, like the Russell School, to a private individual with deed restrictions that the building has to maintain its character because it's in the center of town. It's beautiful. It would be a shame for it to be demolished and to look totally different from what it is now. Um, I think as an option to save money and to reduce costs, getting rid of these older buildings would be helpful. Um, again, with the understanding that they have to maintain their appearance because they add so much charm and character to the town. Thank you. I think there's a number of things that we have to really consider here. I think that first of all, that we've got some very tough decisions to make. We have no idea what's gonna happen with our revenue stream. As I said in my opening statement, you drive up Route 9, it's it's devastating. You have restaurants trying to hold on for dear life where the grab and goes, you know, they're curbside services, uh, hotels and motels, uh, empty parking lots, same with the malls. It's very difficult. So I think that not only uh, that we're, we should really look into what our state reps uh, State Senator Joe can do for us, what Dan can do for us, absolutely. 
we can, you know, even see if another town wants to share with a very part-time subcontractor and writing grants, but we need to do something because we're going to have to freeze our spending unless it's absolutely essential. We have a break somewhere in our water line. We have a break somewhere in our sewer line. We have to do something we'll, or our first responders need something that's going to keep us all safe. We've got to put a freeze on spending. There can't be any more tax increases whatsoever. And we're going to have to, to you know, be very careful because we don't know where the chips are going to fall. They're going to fall somewhere. Maybe they'll fall in our favor, but I doubt it. You know, I, I'm an optimistic, but this is something I've never seen. And most of us have never seen. Nobody's ever seen something like this, but we have to be prepared. We're already in a huge deficit. and you know, where it came from, how it happened. We still have to be very careful. And thanks so much again to the Mother's Club. So the economic damage from COVID-19 has not finished happening yet. And there is really no way to know how long that will continue. And it is a serious problem. And I agree with everyone else the residents of Hadley are suffering as badly as anyone, and we're all going to have to tighten our belts and do with less and not raise taxes. We need to look outside the box. We need to find perhaps something in one of the stimulus packages is available for towns. I'm sure our town administrator is already working on that sort of thing, but we need to be creative and we need to support each other, and we will be going through some hard times. So that is, um, those are the questions that we we're going to ask for the select board um, in a matter of time, because, you know, everybody needs a couple of minutes to respond. So we, um, we went through all the questions and those four seem to have a nice variety of different topics. And um, we thank the, um, uh, the uh, candidates that are running for select board. And again, it's a three-year term. And um, the uh, candidates are on your screen right now, Nicole Burkin bass Brenda feiden Kevitz, Jane Nevin-Smith, and Amy Parsons. And thank you all for coming, and we appreciate you um, attending. Um, visit uh, our website, hallymothersclub.org, for information about Recycling Day. Um, we hope to have this, uh, this event late this summer. We have been talking with our uh, members and it, it's something that um, we feel that it's a, a great service to the town. We usually have it uh, at the end of April. And of course that did not happen. So we are um, thinking again about the end of August. So that information will be up on our website when we decide a date. And we hope that um, you might be cleaning out your um, garages and you can get rid of a few things. Um, so I think the next candidate up uh, to speak is for the Board of Health, and that's um, for a three-year term for Board of Health. Um, our first candidate will be Susan Mosler, and she has her opening statement. So um, whenever you're ready, Susan. First, I want to thank the Mothers Club for hosting this important event. Next, I want to acknowledge my opponent, Dick Tessier, and personally thank him for the many years of hard work he's invested in our Board of Health. My name is Susan Mosler. I've been a doctor for 35 years, with the past 23 here in the Valley. My interest in serving on the Board of Health comes from my desire to use my skills and experience to keep Hadley healthy and safe. My husband and I have lived in the Valley in Hadley for around 10 years. We love living in this town, close to nature in a semi-rural environment, and one that has a long history of farming. In addition to my professional work, I'm very committed to growing our own food. I preserve what we grow and it helps sustain us through the winter. I'm also a beekeeper. We've all recently learned a lot about the public health system and the complex relationship between federal, state, and local. The Hadley Board of Health has many important functions that are delegated to us from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. This includes emergency preparedness, food vendor inspections, septic inspections, and more. 
During a time of public health emergency, the Board of Health is required to ensure that all executive orders from our governor are carried out, as well as directives from the State Department of Public Health. This would include case reporting, contact tracing, isolation, and quarantine directives. In addition, we need to plan, develop, and enact local policies to specifically ensure the health of our town residents. I feel that my knowledge based in medicine and science will serve us well as we look for best practices to ensure that we follow health guidelines and create policy during this pandemic. As we move forward through the pandemic, we need to think about schools reopening. I'm prepared to work collaboratively with our local town officials on the school committee, the school nurse and other departments to create policies and guidelines that will ensure that our school community is as safe as possible. Soon, we will be opening our new senior center. I recently learned that our town has the highest ratio of senior citizens to total population in the entire state. We need to be thinking about ways to keep our seniors engaged at the center while ensuring their safety. When we start to reopen our local businesses, let's do it right. We have around 150 registered food vendors in Hadley. The state mandates that we have them inspected for health and safety twice a year. Last year, less than 40% of these inspections were completed. When we grab a hot dog at the Cumberland Farms, snack at the movie theater, go to the grocery store and get takeout from the hot bar, eat at a restaurant, or go to a sporting event at the Mullen Center, we want to be sure that the food that we're eating has been stored, prepared, and served according to best practices. As a town, we are ultimately responsible for ensuring that the food is clean and safe for all of us to eat. After we have food and septic, septic inspections done, it's critical that we file them on a computer database. This allows us to easily retrieve records on an as needed basis. Right now, a lot of our Board of Health records are stored in cardboard boxes outside of the town hall. Professionalization and modernization will serve us well as we move forward into the new normal. I made a decision to run for the Board of Health prior to our current health crisis. Today, I feel even more committed to civic engagement. Thank you for your support. So the first question is, do you think that the federal government response has helped or hurt the health of Hadley residents in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic? Give reasons for your yes or no answer. Well, I think uh, that the federal response uh, has been a a complex uh, combination of uh, political agenda, uh, as well as uh, some uh, highly regarded healthcare experts. Um, I think that uh, certainly uh, when we look to Dr. Fauci, uh, we can rest assured that whatever information he's sharing with us is uh, based in science and facts and uh, will serve us well on the federal level, the state level, as well as the local level. Uh, In addition, um, the the issues with testing and uh, availability of testing, again, it's it's a complicated problem. There's supply chain issues. And uh, do I think the federal government could be doing a better job? Yes. Uh, Do I think that they have done things that have been helpful and that uh, have contributed to our safety here in Hadley? Yes. Okay. All right. The second question is, currently the pandemic is taking significant health board time. However, the Board of Health also plays a key role outside of an event like this in terms of septic inspections, restaurant inspections, salons, etc. This is a working board with no staff to carry out these duties. What time commitment and skill set do you bring 
to ensuring all of these duties and responsibilities of the board will be carried out? Well, first of all, I'm a, I'm a doctor, so uh, I certainly have uh, skills that uh, pertain to uh, health. Um, I also, uh, in addition to being uh, on the active uh, medical staff at Cooley Dickinson Hospital, I am uh, the uh, Associate Vice Chief of uh, Administrative uh, Affairs for the uh, Department of Medicine. So um, I uh, have connections uh, with Cooley Dickinson and certainly am involved in the day-to-day -day functioning there. Uh, as far as our health board, um, there is a lot of work that the health board is mandated to do by the state. And in addition, uh, there's things to be done locally uh, to, to help keep us uh, safe and healthy. I think we need to sit down, we need to assess exactly what the tasks are, what the need is in town, um, and, uh, and, and figure out how to get best get everything done. I think that the three members who sit on the Board of Health uh, are all volunteers. Uh, they're working long, hard hours, uh, even before the pandemic. Uh, it would seem to me that uh, we're going to need to look to the other departments of Hadley to see exactly how they manage their workloads. Um, certainly uh, getting a computerization, uh, uh, getting our database uh, up and running, that, that will be some, give us some, uh, some ease of, uh, of the workload. And uh, uh, moving forward, we'll, we'll have to assess uh, what the needs are. And if in fact, you know, we need some administrative help, we're going to need to to get that. Uh, I know we're all concerned about uh, being fiscally responsible. Uh, I would just say that one thing that uh, lesson that I've learned through my professional and my personal life is that our health is our most valuable asset, the health of ourselves, our families, and our community. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, um, there's one more question. <clears throat> um, do you feel the town's health systems are adequate to this crisis and why? Well, firstly, I have to say that not being on the Board of Health now, I am not privy to everything that, that, that they're doing. Uh, I do know that they've been working very, very hard uh, and uh, in coordination with the Massachusetts Department of, of Public Health. So, um, you know, I, I hope that, uh, that they're working to make sure that we're in compliance with, uh, with the governor's uh, um, health uh, uh, recommendations and those of the Department of Public Health and uh, uh, I also think that our Board of Health has been coordinating and collaborating with our local towns. Okay. All right. That is the uh, last question I have for uh, the Board of Health. And so this is the uh, can, uh, um, position of the Board of Health, which is a three-year term. And thank you for coming on. Thank you. Stay healthy. All right. Thank you. So as uh, Barbara is uh, uh, moving around people uh, for us, uh, just another quick announcement. Um, so as, as of right now, uh, the Hadley Holiday Fair is, is sponsored by Hadley Mothers Club. It's expected to take place on November 21st at Hopkins Academy from 9 to 3. And again, please check out our website for more and our and or our Facebook page for more information. Um, we will be having, um, featuring some vendors soon, so you can um, kind of get an idea of who's gonna be there. And um, we are, looks like we are all set to have our candidates for planning board. There are, um, there is uh, the planning board, it's a five year term. And um, we have, let's see, we have um, 
the incumbent is um, Joseph Sagrodnik, and um, he will be doing his five minute introduction and you can go ahead whenever you're ready joe hi i'm joe zagrodnik uh first of all from a background point of view i grew up on a farm in north hadley and i went to grammar school in the north hadley village hall then to hopkins academy from there to amherst college from amherst college to tufts dental school had a residency in worcester memorial hospital and I was drafted or conscripted into the military during the Vietnam era in 66, 67, 68 as a designated oral surgeon. Back to Tufts Orthodontic School and eventually set up practice in Northampton and Amherst. Practiced for 50 years, transitioned the practice to Dr. DeMeo. Oftentimes people ask me, why? Why do I want to be on the planning board and why do I continue to run for the planning board? Well, my mission is to preserve open space, the rural character of the town, especially the ag our good agricultural land. I've been on two long range planning committees, the one that ended in 05 and the one that ended in 2017. And both times, the overwhelming response, the number one response from the citizens of Hadley was they want to maintain the rural atmosphere, the open space, and the agricultural base in Hadley. So I feel um, my mission for running for the planning board kind of does, it does dovetail into the, the long range planning that the town had implemented twice in the past 20 years. One of the other issues is Route 9, of course, that could be an evening long discussion. Suffice it to say that development follows rivers, Hadley, 1659, then it followed railroads. Now development follows sewer lines. And obviously with the sewer going down Route 9 and the expansion of the business, that's our tax base. Always has to be monitored and always has to be tweaked. But nevertheless, that's what we have, the sewer line in Route 9 and it does attract the business. There are always a hot, few hot button items. And a few years ago, it was solar panels. And then a couple of years ago, it was the recreational marijuana. And it's surprising that the town and their referendum voted overwhelmingly in favor of recreational marijuana. But the, uh, the couple of planning board meetings we did, did have when people want to grow hot in their backyard, there was an overwhelming response against it. So uh, the town, I mean, the planning board had to come up with some, some creative ways of allowing the people to kind of go with the will of the, of the townspeople in their vote, yet protect the interests of the neighbors. The current hot button item is affordable housing. Hadley, has 13% of its housing declared affordable. This is according to state regulations. We have 2,200 housing units and roughly uh, 280 deemed, quote, affordable by the state. So that's 13%. That is the highest in the Happy Valley. Uh, Amherst has 10.5%. Uh, Northampton has 11%, and let's see some of the other towns, our surrounding towns, Sutherland has 1%. They're currently building some uh, affordable housing now. South Hadley has 5.6%. Uh, North, uh, let's see, South Hadley has 5.6%, and or Hatfield has 3.3%. So from a point of view of uh, allowing affordable housing, I think the planning board has done a reasonable job because we are have the highest percentage in, in our valley. Uh, a few years ago, the inclusionary bylaw by was implemented and voted on at the town meeting. And uh, the inclusionary bylaw means that you have to have so many units if you're building a subdivision as affordable. And uh, this town meeting, you'll be voting on the uh, affordable housing trust fund, such that money will be set aside for affordable units. I would probably be 
remiss if I didn't mention the fact that there is something a little hovering over us uh, called this pandemic. It may affect our little village of Hadley, but it's definitely affecting the world. It kind of reminded me of a a song we had in chorus many years, years ago. I will not sing it, I promise. But it, it goes, it's from the music carousel. You can wander it through the night and there's a storm that can be coming upon us. And don't be afraid of the dark. Tomorrow will show us the golden light and also the sweet silver song of the lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone. I say we will have to walk all together and we will definitely need the community's help to do it. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Um... Our next um, candidate for planning board is Mark Howard. Hi, my name is Mark Howard and I'm running for the planning board. Uh, I was born at Cooley Dickinson Hospital in 1963. Uh, my parents met in the hatch at UMass in 1959. They both graduated from UMass. Uh, in the end, I would end up graduating from UMass. My wife graduated from UMass. My brother graduated from UMass. We have a long connection with the university. Uh, I came back up here to pursue graduate school. My wife and I moved to Hadley 23 years ago. Our daughter has grown up here. Uh, she attends Hopkins Academy. We've been really happy with her experience here. She's played softball and soccer for many years and received just tremendous, uh, countless hours of dedication from local parents as her coaches, and we really do appreciate that. Uh, when we moved to Hadley, I was in graduate school at UMass in economics. I was working at the time for uh, Regional Economic Models Incorporated, REMI, which was located in Hadley then. Uh, they're a top producer of regional economic policy software, uh, really the top producer in the world for that. Uh, I now teach economics at Springfield College. As an economist, what we do uh, is cost-benefit analysis. Our bread and butter is, uh, is cost-benefit analysis. And I hope to bring that knowledge and that skill to bear to maximize the well-being of Hadley residents. Uh, prior to becoming an economist, I, uh, I grew up on Cape Cod. I, I had three jobs down there. I was a line cook at a number of restaurants on the Cape. Uh, I was also a uh, asphalt roofer for many years. I brought that skill up here as I, when I was a graduate student, I uh, ended up roofing quite a few houses here in the Valley and that paid the bills for a while. And I was also a commercial fisherman out of Woods Hole uh, for many years. And so I, uh, I had those skills before I became an economist. This past year, I joined the newly appointed Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee. Uh, these topics are important to me. In, uh, in the past, I've served on the City of Springfield's Tax Committee. Uh, that committee, which is put together uh, as part of the Finance Committee for the City of Springfield, requires an economist on its board. And I've been interested in, in regional economic planning and development since I was at REMI 23 years ago, and I think it makes me a good fit for the planning board. Uh, as I see it, Hadley needs responsible development. And that means we should maintain and, and fully utilize the existing commercial zones rather than extend those zones into residential areas. Uh, we must continue to diversify our tax base, really away from retail because the retail sector is in decline and it's likely to continue to decline. Uh, while small farms are having a, a hard time around the country, they're still making it in this valley and, and we must support, continue to support those small farms. Uh, it's one of the things me and my wife love about Hadley. We're both small town people uh, and we, we really appreciate that aspect of Hadley. And as the town's master plan does state, uh, we need to protect Hadley's agricultural character and economy. I'm running against uh, 
Joe, and I, I thank him for his 30 years of service. We all owe him a debt of gratitude. That being said, a position on the planning board should not be a lifetime appointment. Uh, I offer a different skill set, different ideas, and I give the residents the opportunity to vote for someone new. And so I ask you for your vote on May 16th. Thank you very much. Thank you. The master plan is very clear that residents want to preserve the rural nature of the town. Housing has been identified as an issue for lower to moderate income households. These include not only families identified as low income, but also recent college graduates who want to stay in the area and households looking to downsize. As a planning board member, what steps would you take to address this issue and be specific? When you consider affordable housing, it, affordable housing can be anything, but it's, if it's measured by the government standard or this Commonwealth standard, we have 13%, like I indicated before, of our housing as affordable. That's the highest in the Valley. Hadley can make some concessions to, to probably more affordable housing, but the chief economist for the American Builders Association said it's the four L's. Lending is becoming more expensive. Land is becoming more expensive. The uh, labor is becoming more expensive. The try and finding a plumber or electrician. Lumber is becoming more expensive because now it has to be stamped and imported. And the other thing is local. For example, on Shattuck Road, there was a 12 lot subdivision proposed in a preliminary plan. They lost four of those lots because it could be potential habitat to the uh, spotted turtle. That only means the other houses are gonna be more expensive. So there's a lot involved, more than just local zoning. But from our perspective, the inclusionary bylaw means that if somebody's gonna put a subdivision in, you have a certain percentage that will be affordable. And uh, the affordable housing trust fund that will be presented before this annual town meeting is going to set some money aside for affordability in the housing market. All right. And next is uh, Mark Howard. Yeah, well, uh, I actually would agree with uh, some of what Joe said there. The uh, affordable housing trust fund is going to be set up to uh, to provide some relief there, but it's limited in what it can do. It can uh, it can purchase some properties that might be on the market. Uh, I think that uh, one of the issues with affordable housing is the fact that that if we're looking to maintain that affordability for young families, those families probably aren't going to live want to live, you know, right like right next to a bunch of college students. So I, I think that we need to think about ways to uh, to uh, allow areas in town, perhaps an area in town, where we might re relax some of the zoning, uh, allow for um, uh, multi-unit houses in areas that aren't going to be um, dominated by the college students, because uh, as as we all know, uh, living right next to a bunch of college students isn't always the most pleasant experience. And so I think that is a challenge for Hadley, uh, finding ways that we can encourage affordable housing away from uh, the, the masses of 19 and 20 year olds. All right. Great. Um, so I'd like to thank um, both candidates. Um, so this is the um, seat for planning board and it's a five year term. And we thank you gentlemen for attending this evening. Thank you. All right. If you're a Hadley senior citizen and want help with shopping, please contact the Hadley Council on Aging. Um, they have a service that you can sign up for um, if you do not want to go into the grocery store and um, you just contact them for details. Um, uh, Hadley Millisco also has donated many needed items for the brown bag program. We helped in December, March, and April, and we were we just helped with um, you know, a lot of those paper products, which are really difficult to get. And um, if you want any information about the Brown Bag Program, you can also contact the Council on Aging. So looks like we have next 
our uh, next um, candidate is up. This is for school committee, which is a three-year term. And our candidate tonight is with us is Ethan Percy, and he will start with his uh, five-minute um, introduction. Take it away. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ethan Percy, and I'm running for school committee. Thank you to everyone who has shown up tonight as part of the virtual Hadley Candidates Night. I wanna thank the Hadley Mothers Club for hosting this event and for their continued support of the town of Hadley in all that they do. They are a vital part of what makes Hadley a great place to live. I also wanna thank all of the candidates who are here tonight and running for an elected position. It is important to our community that we have strong elected officials who are committed to creating the best Hadley there can be. And I have no doubt that this setting will allow the people of Hadley to get a better sense of who will provide that over the next few years. I'm running for school committee first and foremost because of my two young children. My four-year-old Cole is in preschool at Hadley Elementary and my three-year-old Parker will start preschool this fall. I plan to send my kids to the Hadley Public Schools and want to make sure they are receiving a quality education in a safe environment. I am sure there are other parents out there who feel the same way. And because of that, I am passionate about giving every student and their family the voice they deserve and the support they need through education. In addition, I've worked in education for over 15 years and understand the value that education can have on a community. I am currently a college counselor at a private high school in Connecticut. And over the years, I've worked in the Baltimore City Public Schools, as well as in higher education at both Elms College and the University of Arizona. With my experience in education, combined with my vested interest in Hadley schools for my children, I want to see our schools continue to offer robust programming, after school opportunities, and to continue to look for ways to improve. I want to make sure parents feel their students are safe, that they are receiving a high quality education, and that we are preparing students for post-secondary options that could take them in a variety of directions. I want families to know that the school committee is responsive to the community's concerns, and that we are looking out for what's best for their children while looking at ways to improve the education and academic experience that Hadley Public Schools provides. I am looking forward to working with my fellow committee members as we enter a different time in our town's history. With COVID-19 at the center of many of our conversations and social distancing now a normal part of many of our lives, it is important that we plan for the future. With Governor Baker's announcement last week that schools will be closed for the rest of the year, I am eager to begin working with the other school committee members and superintendent to ensure our schools are well prepared for the upcoming school year, especially if it includes distant learning and what implications that may bring for things like technology costs and providing meals to the families in our community. It will be important that we as public service members work together to find solutions for the people of Hadley, and that means placing a high value on our students and their education. In closing, education has long been a passion of mine. I see the immense value of a school system and its community working together to provide young people with the opportunities to succeed. I understand the value that a strong education can offer and believe that Hadley is committed to providing a comprehensive and robust education for their students. I'm excited to become a part of the school committee and work closely with all of you as we continue to educate our students at the highest level. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan. And that is um, the candidate for school committee, which is a three-year term. Thank, thank you, Ethan. Thank you. All right. And um, we just wanted to say as a public service announcement that if, um, you know, check on your neighbors, um, especially if they're elderly during this time of isolation, and uh, send a card, leave a treat on their step. And we all thank you. We're all in this together. So we'd like to help each other out. All right, so it looks like that we have in our queue here a, a lector under Oliver Smith Will. It's a one year term, and I would like to introduce you to Sheila Knutsney. Okay. Thank you to the Happy Mothers Club for hosting this Zoom candidates night tonight. My name is Sheila Knutsney. And I'm a candidate for the elector under the Oliver Smith will. I'm a lifelong resident of Hadley and live on Shattuck Road with my husband, Steve. We have two grown children, Jeffrey and Emma. I'm a graduate of the University of Massachusetts Amherst and have worked there for more than 30 years. Currently, I'm the Associate Director of Financial Aid Services. I would like to share with you some information about the elector for the Oliver Smith will. 
Oliver Smith was a successful farmer from Hatfield who died in 1845, leaving one of the most extraordinary wills ever filed in Massachusetts. Smith Charities was established in 1848 by the will of Oliver Smith. In 1847, the heirs of Oliver Smith hired Rufus Choate to contest the will at a Supreme Court trial held in Northampton. The trustees of Smith Charities hired Daniel Webster, who successfully defended the provisions of the will. The provisions of the will, which have been amended, established a $400,000 trust which has paid out over $9 million to qualified recipients from nine communities. Further provisions of the will included establishing Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. The will provides financial gifts to widows with children under the age of 18, brides, tradespersons, and nurses. Smith Charities also provides um, mortgages for limited mortgages, you have to have 30% down to qualify them for them. My major duty as the elector is to represent the town of Hadley on the board of electors of the trustees of Smith Charities. I refer to the board of trustees, those who may be eligible to receive the benefits as provided by the will. Over a 10 year period of time, Smith Charities has dispersed more than $30,000 to residents of Hadley. Other electors are selected by voters in communities of Deerfield, East Hampton, Amherst, Greenfield, Hatfield, Northampton, Whateley, and Williamsburg. Thank you for your consideration in the election on May 16th, and please contact me if you or someone you know may be eligible for the benefits of Smith Charities. And stay home, stay safe, and hopefully we'll be through this coronavirus soon. Thank you. Park Commission, which is a three-year term. And I would like to introduce uh, James Shea. And whenever you're ready, Jim, you can go ahead with your introduction. Good evening. I would like to thank the uh, Hadley Mothers Club for inviting me to present why I think I would make a great addition to the Park and Rec Commission. I believe that this is an invaluable tool for people to get to know the people that they're voting for, and I'm very appreciative to have this opportunity. My name is Jim Shea. I live on Middle Street, and I would like to take a minute to explain why Park and Rec is important to me. First and foremost, it gets children outside and often outside of their comfort zone. Learning new things, uh, Park and Rec offers a wide variety of programming from sports, educational opportunities, after school programming, and camps. The department also offers uh, opportunities for adults as well. Sports have always held a special place in my heart. I started playing um, sports as early as I could and continued through high school and into college. Athletics are a great way to test yourself, build confidence, learn teamwork, discipline, and focus. All of these are skills that will help you as you go through life. Uh, these are also some of the reasons my wife and I enjoy being involved with our young son's soccer, basketball, and baseball teams. It's been proven that having a strong park and rec department increases property value and is a consideration for people when deciding where they want to move their families. Projects like the fitness court that park and rec director Jenny Vanoss has worked hard to secure grants for are a huge asset to a town like Hadley. It shows that we're headed in the right direction and that we take child development and adult health and fitness seriously. Like culture and art, recreation, leisure, sports, and activities play an important role in communities. I look forward to assisting, to assisting the director with anything that will support and further the opportunities and experiences the department has to offer our town. Again, I appreciate the Hadley Mothers Club for providing this platform, and thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Um, so that was the, um, the candidate for park commission. It's a three-year term. Thank you, James. Thank you. Have a good night. Um, so that is all the candidates we have this evening. Um, and I just wanted to say a few words in closing. I would like to thank my fellow Hadley Mothers Club members, Peg Jekinowski and Barbara Pliska. This event would not have happened without either one of them. We would also 
like to thank the town of Hadley for your collaboration and assistance to also make this event happen. We also like to thank John Harrison at the Hadley Media, and he will be um, rerunning this program on the channel uh, 192, uh, the, the uh, Hadley channel. And also you can go on YouTube under Hadley Media and watch the whole um, program again in its entirety. So I greatly appreciate everyone attending, all the um, citizens, and um, please um, go uh, again. We'd like to remind all the voters in Hadley that the election will be at Hopkins Academy on Saturday, May 16th from 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. And again, anyone who is uncomfortable about voting in person can request in writing an absentee ballot from the Hadley Town Clerk. Thank you very much. Good night.